Lawrence Kolber was born in Bronxville, New York on October 25, 1927. Kohlberg enrolled in the University of Chicago, and with high test scores, he was excused from many required courses and received his bachelor's degree in just one year. He received his PhD in psychology from the University of Chicago in 1958. His studies were based on his research into the moral choices of adolescent boys and led to a life devoted to the exploration of moral and ethical development in young people. In 1959, Kohlberg joined the staff of Yale University as an assistant professor of psychology. In 1962, he returned to the University of Chicago as an assistant professor. Over several years, he worked as an associate professor and director of the child psychology training program at the university. The remainder of his career was spent as a professor of education and social psychology at Harvard University between 1968 and 1987. Kohlberg married Lucy Stigberg in 1955, and the couple had two sons. Kohlberg died of an apparent suicide in 1987 after a long battle with depression coupled with painful symptoms from a tropical parasite he had contracted in Belize. He parked his car, leaving identifying documents behind, then walked into, into the frigidly cold Boston Harbor. Lawrence Kohlberg agreed with Piaget's theory of moral development, but he wanted to develop it further. Kohlberg used stories to show different moral dilemmas. One of the best remembered was a story about a man named Heinz who lived in Europe. His wife was dying of cancer, and the doctor said that there was a drug that could possibly save her. They were selling this drug at 10 times the price of what it would normally cost, and the husband couldn't afford it even with the help of family and friends. The husband asked the doctor if he could get the drug for cheaper or pay the rest later, but the doctor refused. Desperate to save his wife, Heinz broke into the clinic and stole the drug to give to his wife. Kohlberg would then ask a series of questions related to the story to people of different ages, and through this he developed a theory on the fact that there were different moral stages depending on one's age. Kohlberg developed three levels of moral thinking, with two stages in each level. The three levels are pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. He thought that one did not move on to the next stage until they had fully developed the previous stage. Kohlberg believed that within pre-conventional morality, which is childhood, are two stages, obedience and punishment orientation, and individualism and exchange. He thought that a person's moral code had not yet been developed, and instead that it was shaped by figures of authority around them. In stage one, the child is obedient in order to prevent punishment. They think that if a person is punished, that it means that they have done something wrong. In stage two, the child realizes that there is more than one right way of doing things. Within conventional morality, which is teenagers to young adults, moral standards are internalized and authority isn't questioned. This level contains stage three, good interpersonal relationships, and stage four, maintaining the social order. In stage three, the child is good in order to get approval from others around them. In stage four, the now teenager begins to understand the rules of society and upholds them in order to uphold the law. Within post-conventional morality, which is reached at adulthood, moral reasoning is based on individual rights and judgment. This level contains stage five, social contract and individual rights, and stage six, which Kohlberg believed most adults never reached, universal principles. In stage five, the individual realizes that even though there are laws for the greater good, there are times that the law will be against the interest of specific individuals, such as shown in the Heinz dilemma. In stage six, the individual has established their own set of moral principles that may or may not align with society's moral principles. For example, they will uphold their own principles even when the society believes in the opposite. Despite Kohlberg's intentions, 
Critics have identified a few disadvantages of his moral development theory. One of these disadvantages is the fact that Kohlberg's theory insinuates that people can place their own moral principles above the laws of the society that they live in and the established laws of that country. Another criticism of Kohlberg's moral development theory is the cultural bias problem. For example, considering a set of cultural norms in one society without adequate consideration of how or even if the same norms can be effectively applied to a different culture. Kohlberg's critics note the fact that this theory of moral development borrows heavily from moral theories from Western culture without a clear explanation on how the theory can be applied to non-Western cultures. Another flaw in Kohlberg's theory was that Kohlberg posed that women were often at a lower stage of moral development than men, but psychologist Carol Gilligan questioned his findings. Gilligan claims that women place a strong emphasis on caring and empathy rather than on justice. She developed an alternative scale, heavily influenced by Kohlberg's scale, that showed that both men and women could reach advanced stages of moral development. Lawrence Kohlberg's theory on moral development can be applied to the classroom where rules, standards, and consequences are concerned. The theory tracks an individual's level of moral reasoning by assigning him to one of six stages, where the first stage is a basic submission to authority and the last is universal ethics for all. As an educator, consider where your student's personal development lies in terms of Kohlberg's six stages, then work toward achieving optimal moral character through a positive and constructive learning environment. Give students the opportunity to help create a classroom code of conduct. In this way, they will become responsible for the rules that they set and follow them accordingly rather than blindly agreeing to standards set by school administrators or other authorities. By creating classroom policy, students can advance from stage one submission to stage three, where they are accountable within the small classroom community. Allow for a written self-evaluation as part of any disciplinary consequence. It does not have to be lengthy, but it should provide the student with adequate time to review their own reasoning for misbehavior and to come up with a solution for the future. This type of action relates to Kohlberg's fourth stage of morality, in which individuals do their part to maintain order by reflecting on the impact of their words and actions. Plan group projects where students work together toward the understanding of curriculum instead of sitting back and listening to the teacher talk to them. Not only is this sure to get students more involved, but it places the responsibility of learning onto the students, forcing them to adhere to the classroom goal of educational enrichment as in Kohlberg's fifth morality stage on upholding a social contract. Make time for role play. Whether it be related to the curriculum or used as a problem solving tool, by acting or seeing situations through the eyes of others, students gain a more broad understanding of what is taking place. This helps them make decisions based not on themselves, but on a commitment to the group. Similarly, they have advanced to Kohlberg's sixth stage, in which the needs of every person in society are worth considering. In a classroom, a brief skit or scenario can help students focus on making sure everyone is involved and engaged in learning.